we'll start with the uh, with the last talk of the day. We have uh, Javier Gomez Mon from CIMAT, who will talk about the multiplication of the Jacobian algebra and hypersurfaces. Yeah, I'd like to thank the organizers for organizing such a nice uh, meeting. And also I would like to take the occasion to thank Professor Griffiths because uh, reading his books and his articles, uh, I have obtained uh, much of my geometric intuition. So thank you very much for working so hard. <coughs> and uh, so, uh, my talk is, is a relation between algebra and topology. And the main point is going to be some uh, polarization, some bilinear forms. And so the algebraic setting is the following. We have a, a holo German holomorphic function with an isolated singularity. We have the Jacobian ideal generated by the partial derivatives of the function. And this is the Jacobian ring. It is a finite dimensional uh, ring. And this ring also can be uh, obtained from n plus 1 holomorphic differential forms modulo df wedge omega n. So this is another way to obtain a, a module. This is the Jacobian module, which is, has the same dimension as the Jacobian ring. And so there is a, a, an isomorphism which depends on, on the coordinates. And um, so we will denote by A. And <coughs> there's a, a, a wonderful formula, which is uh, the following. So we take multiplication in the algebra A, and then we take this linear map from holomorphic functions into the complex numbers, which is a 1 over 2 pi i to the n plus 1. And this is the integral over this cycle. This is the cycle where the norm of the functions is equal to epsilon of g. And then we put in the denominator f0 fn. And, and this set. So this over here is a closed differential form. And so it does not, this, this integral does not depend on the epsilon. And so it gives rise to a function. Uh, so if g is in the Jacobian ideal, then L of g is equal to 0 by Stokes' theorem. One applies Stokes' theorem into this formula. And really, the fundamental thing of the map L is that the Hessian of f, which is the, is the determinant of the matrix of second derivatives, is equal to the degree, which is a positive number. So uh, this ring is a, a wonderful ring in the sense that it has a, a minimal ideal, a non-zero minimal ideal, which is one dimensional, which plays the role of the dual to the maximal ideal. And so, uh, but this, 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 this uh, uh, so one obtains this Grothendieck non-degenerate bilinear form, <coughs> uh, given, it, so it comes from multiplication, and then we apply this linear function. That's the, it gives a non-degenerate bilinear form in this in this Jacobian uh, algebra A. Now we're going to do multiplication by f in the algebra A. So multiplication by f is an impotent map, and we have the Jordan block type of the map, as we know from our linear algebra courses. Uh, we have this Jordan block decomposition. And so uh, we, we, we are going to represent it in this form. So this means that this one over here is a block of size 4, so another block of size 4, then another block of size 7, and, and so we make this, this decomposition. And uh, <coughs> so the annihilator of f is these beginning terms. The, the beginning. So this means that if I apply f, I go to 0. So this I view as a pyramid. And then the f is you move to the right. So if you are on the extreme of the pyramid and you say you move, then you fall off the pyramid, right? And so now the 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 the, anique, the primitive classes corresponds to the first part of the pyramid. And so in that sense, 
There is a bijection between primitive classes and the annihilator, because one of them is the beginning of the pyramid and the other is the end of the pyramid. And <coughs> so, uh, and, 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 and this induces this, the, this is called the weight filtration. So uh, uh, the, the weight filtration uh, means the following. You put in this, so you center the pyramid in, in the middle of all these strings and you center and then the ones over here uh, you call omega zero I and mean omega minus m omega minus m plus one you put the center in omega zero and then you finish with omega m zero and by construction it has a symmetry because of this pyra pyramidal uh, structure <coughs> this I learned from one of uh, Phil, uh, uh, first articles but this geometric picture is my picture of, of, of this. Uh, so <coughs> now, so we have these primitive classes. And uh, so now one may choose a Jordan basin ordering them according to the way. So this means that we begin, so we begin with the basis over here, and then we complete the basis over here. But see, the thing is that if here we take omega zero, omega one, omega two, omega three, then when you come over here, you put f omega one, f omega two, f omega three, and then you put the new ones. And then this one, you put f square of this one, f of these ones, and then the new ones. And so you can you can be factoring the f's in this in in in, in this in, 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 in this way. And now <coughs> we take we choose this basis, and uh, if, if we look at the matrix expression of the of this uh, Grothendieck residue using this basis, it looks like this. So what this means is 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 the following. See, if I take an element which is close here to the end of the pyramid, and I take another guy which <coughs> So if, if, if I take a guy here and I do work, the product with this one, then this one has a lot of F. And so with this one, if it's, if it's close here, I take inverse of F here, and then I push the Fs, and then I push the guy off the pyramid. So, <coughs> so if, if you're here close to the end of the pyramid, if you do product with someone who, who has enough steps previous, then you push the other guy. And so this uh, becomes in the fact that the, the, in, in this basis, the matrix expression of the bilinear form is of this form. Now, <coughs> it, it, here this suggests something which, uh, which, which is the following is to take the grading, the grading according to the weight filtration of this uh, Jacobian module. So it is not anymore <coughs> the Jacobian module. It's a vector space of the same dimension, but you're taking the grading. And then you can consider the bilinear form induced in the graded, which corresponds to taking this, the same matrix that, you, that we had before, <coughs> but putting zeros underneath. So the, 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 the trick of, of doing this grading thing is getting rid, rid of these uh, stars over here. And then <coughs> one can do the, the following trick. So now uh, this uh, bilinear form in the graded uh, module has the following uh, trick that you take a guy over here and, 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 and a guy over here and then, uh, so see here, if, if, if you take this, if you are in the primitive pieces, what you do is the following, is you move, 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 all the way to the end, and then you apply the bilinear form. That's what this is saying over here, see? You, you, you take primitive terms, so this term is going to be orthogonal to everybody except these guys. And so what you do, you get a non-degenerate bilinear form <coughs> of the primitive pieces by doing, you take two elements over here, and so you push all the way, and then you do this uh, Grothendieck duality. And so this means 
that <coughs> uh, there is a, a repetitive, repetitive structure in this uh, bilinear form in the graded uh, uh, Jacobian module, <coughs> which is <coughs> given by, by elements in this primitive uh, form from this primitive uh, thing. Now, <coughs> Uh, for, for, for me, it's, it's, it's strange that uh, th there's the even and the odd. So this means this, uh, so there are like two pyramids, one inside the other, because this is a degree two map. So if you have something which has degree six, or minus six, minus four, minus two, and, and then it's increasing by the, uh, the construction we made, but then even and odd, don't have to pair, pair off, and so there are like two pyramids, and so one of them you can take the even one and the odd ones, so the, 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 there are two structures, and, and so this, this repetitive bilinear structure uh, means the following thing, is that in this graded module, you have a direct orthogonal direct sum decomposition, where here you have the even ones, and here you have the odd ones, and then the even ones, these terms over here, correspond to the ones uh, in, in the middle of the pyramid. So this means that the ones which are here in the middle ones, they don't get paired off with anyone. And then the ones which are here on the sides, then they get paired off. And so here it depends whether you're even or odd, it's only the ones which are here in the middle. And so this bilinear form has this expression that these are the ones which are in the middle of the pyramid, and then the other ones, you get a one, and then you get a two, and then you get a three, and <clears throat> since I'm going to be interested in a moment when I make this thing over the real numbers, in this a signature. So all these terms over here will give signature zero, so the only significant contribution to the signature of the bilinear form are going to be these terms in the middle. All these get cancelled out. So there is this repetitive structure. Now I'm also going to be interested not only in in, in this Grothendieck residue, but in an, in, a, in in another form, which is first you multiply by f, and then you apply an element and an element. So instead of this formula, which I mentioned before, this Grothendieck formula. You can, you can play the following trick. So instead of doing this, G and H, you multiply here with an F, or with an F squared, or with an F cube. So this gives several, this gives different bilinear forms. So there's not only one bilinear form, but there are a series of, uh, of bilinear forms which correspond to multiplication by F in, this, in, in, in these terms. And so if you do this, then, what happens is that since one is multiplied by f, everything which is in the annihilator of f, the bilinear form is this bilinear form is going to be degenerate over here. So you get rid of these terms, you divide by the annihilator of f, and now you get a new bilinear form. But then the primitive structure, you you can you can get the the composition of the graded uh, module associated to this uh, to this module, uh, <coughs> and so. You obtain it from the same primitive pieces, but before here we had S0, S2, S4, and now over here we have S1, S3, S5, and if we do F squared, then we get S2, S4. S so in that sense, one can obtain from this primitive decomposition not only the pieces of the original uh, bilinear form, but of all the bilinear forms. And so here, uh, 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 this is uh, <coughs> some questions I, uh, you know, I, I like to ask myself: Is what's the meaning of this uh, of this vector space, which is this graded sum of these graded pieces? And what are the meaning of these bilinear forms? The geometric meaning of the bilinear forms? And then this is motivated uh, for the case over the real numbers, where we have a, a real, a real. Uh, a, 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 a real uh, uh, analytic function which, which has an algebraic and isolated singularity when we can define the real Jacobian algebra using real analytic functions instead of holomorphic functions. And the same formula will give us a non-degenerate bilinear form 
and then it has a sign, there's a signature. And so the, the question is, what is the meaning of the primitive forms in this case, and what is the meaning of the signature of, the, of this bilinear form in, this, in, in the primitive uh, pieces? Uh, overall, because there is this theorem of Arnold that says that if sigma f is the signature of the real Grothendieck bilinear form on the real Jacobian algebra, then the Euler characteristic of the real Milner fiber, which is this uh, fiber f minus 1 equal to plus or minus epsilon, then you can compute the information contained in the signature is the Euler characteristic. But then we have broken up this uh, signature into a lot of pieces with a repetitive structure. So, uh, uh, so th this, this question is the one which is motivating uh, what I'm saying, uh, what, what I'm trying to, to understand. Now, the, the, uh, this other part was the algebraic setting. Now, here comes the topological setting. The map F restricted to a suitable uh, neighborhood of zero <coughs> Outside of zero is a locally trivial fiber bundle with fiber, the Milner fiber, which is homotopically a bouquet of mu n-dimensional spheres. And the only interesting homology group, homology group is this one. And uh, so this bundle uh, may be completed over zero. Uh, so uh, we saw uh, better pictures than mine in Pablo, uh, uh, Pablo's lecture. So uh, anyway, so we have this vibration, we have this monodromy map, and then the monodromy map is a map which goes from the cohomology to the cohomology. We're going to decompose the monodromy map into its semi-simple and its unipotent part, and then if from this monodromy map we have the generalized eigenvalue decomposition. It is by the monodromy theorem, these are roots of unity, and then the unipotent part of the monodromy keeps invariant the decomposition, and so we have these maps. And then we define this n, the n operator, which is the logarithm of the unipotent part, which is this matrix. And since this is an important thing, this is only a finite sum. And so we have this n. Now, <coughs> uh, we're going to introduce a non-degenerate bilinear form in this uh, vanishing cohomology. And the way one does this is the following. You, you compactify this, uh, so the function, uh, since it has an isolated singularity, you can uh, 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 make a change of coordinates so that it's given by a polynomial, polynomial of sufficiently high degree, so that at infinity it has a nice behavior. And so you compactify into a projective variety. And here you consider coproduct in the middle cohomology, which will be a minus n symmetric form, depending on the, on the dimension. It is symmetric or anti-symmetric. The monodromy map is an automorphism of this bilinear form. And this n is an anti-symmetric operator. So we're going to play the same trick we played with the algebra A. So the algebra A had Grothendieck residue, and it had multiplication by f. Now we're going to define a non-degenerate bilinear form in vanishing cohomology. And the way one does this is on the generalized one eigenspace, one takes this coproduct on this uh, extension y, but one puts an, an n. You apply an n. And before I apply an f, now I am, am I, I am applying the n. And then in all the eigenvalues different from 1, then it's, it's coproduct. So this is something which comes from coproduct of the compactification. And it's independent of the compactification that, that we chose. And then this hn will be a direct sum uh, decomposition, the, or an orthogonal uh, direct sum decomposition. And this vanishing cohomology, uh, what one is killing in the compact in the compactification is the uh, the eigenvalues corresponding to the eigen to the uh, the eigen vectors corresponding to the eigenvalue one, and so this is a polarization on vanishing cohomology. It's symmetric. If S is symmetric, then this one is anti-symmetric. If this is anti-symmetric, then this is symmetric. So this bilinear form 
is a little strange in the sense that it has an orthogonal decomposition in one part is symmetric and in the other part is anti-symmetric. In the algebraic case, it was always symmetric. Here, it's symmetric on one part and anti-symmetric in another part. Now, we repeat the same procedure that we said before. So, we construct another pyramid, the nilpotent map acting on vanishing cohomology by considering the Jordan blocks restricted to one of these eigenvalues. And so we construct another pyramid for each of these lambdas. For, for, for each eigenvalue, we, got, we, we can get one of these. Uh, so we can consider also the annihilator of n. We can consider the primitive classes. And then, <coughs> uh, now, here comes uh, something uh, very interesting. So uh, Pablo spoke about the monodromy. So, so, so you go around the singularity, and you have this monodromy map. Now, uh, so you have the eigenvalues, roots of unity. Now, uh, you don't want only to go around the singularity. You want to go towards the singularity and see the behavior of the things when you go uh, to the singularity. So for example, the function t to the 1 half and t to the 3 halves has the same monodromy problem that when you go around one once, you multiply by by minus one. But the thing is that there is this stronger, is, is, is t is stronger than t to the three halves. So in that sense, uh, this, the difference between the eigenvalues and the spectrum is taking into consideration this thing of you, you want to approach the singularity. So uh, uh, the, the spectrum, so we're going, uh, so the spectrum consists in the choice of logarithms of the eigenvalues of the monodromy. Now, we do not do the choosing. The choosing is done by the function. And so one has to figure out how does the function uh, 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 knows what, what's, 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 the, um, <coughs> what's the logarithm it chooses. So here, if I take lambda, one of these eigenspaces, and I take lambda e equal to e to the 2 pi alpha, then the spectrum will be choices of alpha, alpha plus 1, alpha plus 2, alpha plus 3. And the n operator here is in this choice. So if I correspond, if I have a block of size 2 with respect to the n, then the spectrum will have choose alpha and alpha plus 1. And then the n lifts, lifts to the spectrum. And the Jordan block structure of the n in this part, in, in, in vanishing cohomology, lifts into, into chains. So the spectrums are joined together by chains by means of this topological N. And now, since we have a, now, the, this bilinear form that we define in, in vanishing cohomology, it turns out that if, if you take lambda and mu, if lambda is different from lambda bar, they are orthogonal. So it's an orthogonal decomposition with respect to the eigenvalue thing. So lambda and lambda bar are the only ones which are interacting. And so there is a relation between the Jordan block decomposition of the n in here and the Jordan block decomposition of the n over here. And so when you leave this to the spectrum, then also they will correspond. The, 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 the spectral values which are corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda and lambda conjugate are also related. There is a this relation. Now, uh, here comes, so that was the algebra, the topology. Now, how do you relate the algebra and the topology? So this is this Briscoe map. So the Briscoe map is a wonderful map, which is, 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 is the array uh, residue. So you take a function, g, and you consider the differential form g dc 0 up to dcn. And then you divide by df. And I'm going to explain uh, how you do this division. So, so you, you, you do this, this division, and, and then it gives you a, a, I'm sorry, this should be cohomology. It gives you a cohomology class. So the thing is, is the following. Given, given a section, given a holomorphic function in the ambient space, then there is this procedure of fixing a t, and then you 
the, the, uh, so you take this fiber V sub T, and now uh, you take a homology class, you take a homology class in the fiber VT, and then you do like you, you like you do in, in Cauchy formula. You put a circle around, a, so a circle in the normal bundle, and then you move around, and so this gives an n plus one cycle, which does not contain where the poles, where, 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 the, the, where the poles are, f minus t, and then you define the, the residue. And so the, given a function g, it gives rise to a section of the vector bundle which over every point is the cohomology class the cohomology class of the fiber v sub t so given any function so there's a map which goes from functions to sections of the cohomology bundle by means of this formula and then these sections these uh, these are monovalued holomorphic sections you can expand them uh, according to uh, Magrange in fractional Laurent series expansion with coefficients in the eigenspaces of a vanishing cohomology. So this this section can be expanded, and here you put t to the alpha j plus n appears, and these a alpha j's of t these are multi-valued. Uh, the, the, these are flat sections of of the cohomology bundle. But they are multivalued, but exactly the multivaluedness of the flat section gets cancelled out by the multivaluedness of this factor. And so you get these terms. And the principal term of this expansion, so this is the, the, the first term, which is non zero. This is called the principal term. And the coefficient of this SG is the order of the. Of the and this, this, what this says is what. When you go to, to zero, when you're approaching zero, then this term is the principal term, the, the principal term in the, in, in, in the expansion. So <clears throat> now, so this induces a filtration in the set of functions uh, uh, by saying that the order of the function is bigger than or equal to alpha if the principal term begins in terms bigger than or equal to alpha. Now, there are some sections which we consider as trivial sections. These are the ones which are written in the form df over eta. Because when, when I took this form and I divided by df, so you can cancel this df over here. And so these sections are, you take an n form, you restrict the n form to this, n, to this n complex n dimensional variety, and this gives you this cohomology class. So you consider these sections as trivial. And so this B filtration on omega n plus one will induce an F filtration. So this is in the mixed Hodge structure of this algebra. This is uh, the, the, the Hodge filtration. This is the Hodge filtration. <coughs> and, 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 and so the thing is the following. You say that S, G, S, S of G belongs to this F alpha. If there is an eta in such a way that you can modify the G with DF exterior eta and lower the order of the differential. Uh, 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 and then you say that G is primitive if it is minimal in its class. Now, uh, <coughs> and so this, this, this gives this, this hot filtration in the algebra. The spectral numbers are exactly the points where where this where 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 the Hodge filtration it jumps. That's how that's how one obtains the, the the spectral values is in in this way. And then there there is this uh, wonderful theorem of Barshenko that says the following thing, which is, is the one which relates multiplication with f. So you take one of these n plus one differential forms, be a primitive form, and then you multiply it by f, f of omega. And so uh, the claim is that f of omega is not any more primitive. See, f of omega, if you do this expansion, since, uh, so if, if you take s of f omega, multiplication by f, when you pull it out, it goes as multiplication by t, because it's, we are restricting to the fiber, we restrict it, but the function is constant on the fiber, so the multiplication by f in the algebra uh, converts into multiplication by t. 
So in that in that sense, in the expansion, you would all you would you would only multiply the expansion by t. But the thing is that this f of omega is not primitive anymore. You can get rid of the of the of the of the leading term. And the way you get rid of the leading term is the following. This omega, since it, uh, you can find an eta in such a way that d of eta is omega, and so you take you take this eta, you make it exterior with df. So these these are of these trivial uh, the ones I mentioned, and so you take f of omega minus df of eta, and you have diminished. The, and, and so the, this theorem of Barshenko, this lemma of Barshenko says that if I, a alpha is the principal part of s of omega, then the principal part of f of omega, because this is zero in, in, in the Jacobian algebra, is going to be n. And so here's where the n is coming in. The, the principal term, when you multiply by f in the algebra, it corresponds to multiplication by n in the leading term of the expansion due to this uh, Barshenko lemma. So uh, the result we have is, is, is the following. So uh, we are interested in understanding this bilinear form. And so this bilinear form consists of two additive terms. The dominant one is a topological one, which is this one. And then there is another one which is geometric, and it represents a, a non-topological binding of the of two n Jordan chains in cohomology to one f Jordan chain in the algebra. So let me and, and, uh, explain this in an example. So here we have multiplication by f in the algebra, and so what we're claiming is that you have the, a chain in the A algebra. But then this chain will be broken up when you send it into the cohomology into two chains, one chain over here and then one piece because we are going to break, you're going to get rid of this arrow. And, and, and so this, 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 this happens because the following thing, no? So here you take the omega and you take its uh, primitive uh, form. And so this corresponds to this guy over here. <coughs> now. You start applying the f, and then you look at the pre principal part, the n, and then you apply the f, and then you get the n. But then it happens when you come to this point that you expected. Uh, uh, so this means that if you took the n here, you are in the annihilator of n, and so you get off, you, you 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 go off, and so you begin here in another part of the chain. And, and so that's that's binding of two n chains in the in, in this algebra. And so the claim is that there is a, a, a new bilinear form which is con is concentrated in the annihilator of n divided by the annihilator of f, uh, which is this uh, geometric non-topological uh, part. And so let me do an example. If we consider this function x y x five plus x so this has a, a this Milner number nineteen and here is the eigenvalues a roots of unity and here is the points in the spectrum now you choose eigenvectors s j corresponding to each eigenvalue to each point in in in, in, in the spectrum and so here you have this, an, an orthogonal direct sum, this S1 with the S19, S2 with it. So you have this symmetric uh, orthogonal decomposition of this uh, bilinear form in, in cohomology. And now you choose holomorphic functions in, in the ring in such a way that its principal part is exactly given equal to this. So you, you have these H's. And now, when you do multiplication, so it happens something like this. So you have f of h1, and then it, it, it is f of h1. Then it only has these three terms, 17, 18, 19. f of h2 is this one, so it has this term over here. f of h3 has this. And all the other ones in multiplication by f increases by 1, but there is no more terms over here. f of hj is equal to 0 on, on, on all of these. 
So if, it, if, <coughs> if one looks at this bilinear residue bilinear form, it will have this expression over here. So this one has this expression. In, in, the, in this case of curves, irreducible curves in two variables, the n is identically equal to zero. So the topological part would be the zero bilinear form, and, but nevertheless, in this, uh, when, you, when you consider this bilinear form, it, has, it is a bilinear form of rank two, n is equal to zero, f squared is equal to zero, but f, multiplication by f, is, 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 not, is not zero. And so uh, the Jordan block, the composition in the algebra looks at this form, and then this is uh, the, the cohomology of the thing. And now, uh, why I arrived at this problem is because uh, it, it's, it's some relation with vector fields uh, to understand singularities. So we take a germ of a holomorphic function with an isolated singularity, and we consider the germs of holomorphic vector fields tangent to a singular variety. <coughs> then, uh, <coughs> So uh, let, let me see. So let, 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 let me show you the, the formula. So here is this Arnold uh, result I, I, I showed before, <laughs> but let me show you the formula. Uh, so this is the for so this is a previous result I have with um, uh, Luis Girado and Mardesi, which says uh, the following thing: We have a formula to co to compute the index of the vector field on the on 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 x on the positive and negative uh, uh, part of the middle fiber. And so we have a formula here that uses some uh, bilinear form with, uh, of the same kind that, that I have been explaining uh, before. And then there is plus some constant. And so this constant is independent of the vector field. It only depends on the hypersurface. And then we computed this hypersurface, and it turned out that this was the following. For positive values of the, of the Milner fiber, this is for the case of uh, even number of variables, any, any even. The, this one <coughs> is the sum of the signature of these bilinear forms in the primitive part when we multiply with f to the m. And then in the negative part, then it is minus one to the m, the signature. So since this is coming from an index of vector fields, is something which is topological. And so this constant over here turned out to be topological. So uh, what we're trying to understand is why these terms appear here. And so to understand this in the real case, we extended them to the complex numbers, and uh, that's uh, what I explained to you, and we have not yet finished our research to understand what, why these formulas appear over the real numbers and why these are the normalizing constant in this formula. So thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? If you take, uh, say, isolated surface singularities, um, then frequently when you look at the, the versal deformation and look at the representation of the fundamental group of the parameter space minus the discriminant, you tend to get affine vial groups. Are, how is, does that part of your story, the, so it's not just one monodromy transformation, but it's a whole vow group of which the one you're looking at is the product of the generators, the longest route. Does that, how does that fit in? So, uh, so, so, so you're, you're saying like, like taking a morsification of the function, so as to create no, several no, critical no. points, and no. then this would be critical, uh, critical points of order one, and then the monodromy will be just going exactly. around all the critical yeah. points uh, at, 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 at one uh, uh, at once. Now this that's just the topological one. That's the topological one. Yeah. But but see, see, see the, the thing here of the of of uh, as I mentioned of the spectrum is that uh, you get the spectrum when you approach the singularity. So if you open the singularities. 
then in principle you wouldn't know to which singularity. So in this sense, this is also related to the following thing is to the speed at which these homology groups are, are, are opening up. So when you take, uh, when you do this, this, this uh, morsification of the function, then you have the parameter, and so you have some curves which are, uh, so the morsification depends on the t, and so the critical points are moving in as curves. Now, the thing is the following, which is, 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 is I think is, is the point over here. These are called polar curves. And so, but the polar curves, they may not be irreducible. See, if they are irreducible, it means that the, the critical points of the morsification are all going at the same speed. But if you have different uh, irreducible components, then it, happen it might happen that the critical points are approaching at a different speed. So in, in this sense, in, in this vector field uh, approach, because we have tried, uh, when, when having a vector field tangent to this singular variety, is to push the vector field to emulsification. And so in that sense, there is a, not all the homology groups, not all the vanishing homology groups are the same. There are ones which have a bigger value than the others, and I think this is related to this uh, this 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 Puissot expansion, say, of the of of the curves, uh, uh, the speed at which these homology groups are vanishing. And actually, in my conjecture on on how this uh, these the, 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 these these things are are related is, is the following: when 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 you're over the complex numbers, all homology groups are in the end. In, in the end, in homology. When you're over the real numbers, it's more interesting because you have different homology groups. So if you have the speed of vanishing is not the same, then you have a flag of, in, you can take into consideration the speed of vanishing. So you can take Euler characteristic taking into consideration this, the, 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 the speed of vanishing of the homology groups. So this gives some finer uh, Euler characteristics which are taking into consideration speed of vanishing, which I think uh, is related to, uh, to, 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 to these flags in homology. Is there another question? Okay, so let's thank Javier again. So you're going to get a curve which is going to have several irreducible components. So the question is the following. How can you compute when t is equal to zero, which are the most index of the vector field of the gradient of, of the morsification? And this will give you information of which are the homology groups which are living.